these movie Hogwarts much? This could easily be the opening of movie number 23, titled Albus Severus Potter and the Search for the Glam Band Magical Party Van, part four and three quarters. Also, opening a movie in the clouds gives the bird to nephophobics everywhere, and I for one won't stand for it. Also, also, I don't care if you do have an owl flying through the clouds during this opening. 42 seconds of logos is still 42 seconds of f***ing logos. Littering. Mouse murder. No wonder Disney passed on this franchise. I can already tell this is going to be a mashup of Watership Down, Rio 2, Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, The Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Jungle Book, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, Bambi, The Lion King from 2019, and How to Train Your Dragon. And I really want to see only two to three of those movies, damn it. This is a very delicate looking wind chime. How would an owl make something so intricate? And don't tell me a tiny mouse made it for them. No mouse is friendly with these murderous f***ers. And I've assembled my own army, the Guardians of Gahu! Okay, Jim, we really need you to say the entire title. Considering it's a mouthful and no one will really say the whole thing if the main character doesn't say it. Let's go again! The Guardians of Gahu! Ha <laughs> ha you, you did it again! Make sure you get the full title in there! <laughs> okay, let's try one more time. The Guardians of Gahu! God damn it, Jim! Say the f***ing title! Holy sh! There's a f***ing snake in the owl nest! Hide the children! Blah? She's their blind nursemaid? My god, what is this monstrosity of a movie? Blood, just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't real. Scientology. Also, what in the actual f*** are these names? Clud? Gahool? Was the writer inspired by noises made while trying to shit a brick after eating three cups of famously dank intestinal blocking cheese? The Guardians were outnumbered. Things look dark. Is this another Zack Snyder feature that's directly right in the coattails of 300? Look dark! I'm gonna be the best flyer! You know how Return of the King had like 13 endings? Well, this movie seems like it's had 13 or more beginnings. And we're not even five f***ing minutes in. You know, Clyde, it helps when I picture where I'm gonna land. Unsolicited advice. You had a head start. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Siblings. This Bruce Almighty Moon is so f***ing bright that I don't know how they're gonna catch anything on this nightly hunt. The prey will see them coming from a mile away. I mean, that thing is a goddamn high beam, long range, lumen spotlight on stimulants. I was just thinking that the only thing missing from this opening sequence was an extended shot of an owl vomiting. Also, if every owl yarps up pellets, then Soren's response to Egg's yak hack a moment ago was an inflated reaction for the sake of the viewer. And that's just manipulative emotional misdirection. Soren survives this, and so does Claude, after landing with a mighty thud. You can't do this! Keep your mouth shut. Not to quibble. Wait, I'm supposed to quibble. But shouldn't it be keep your beak shut in owl parlance? Holy sh! how long have they been flying? Tweedledee and Tweedleclud started their surreptitious flight practice right after Mummy and Daddy went on the hunt. So it was the beginning of the evening, and the owl nappers showed up shortly thereafter. So a movie saying they flew all night while carrying these f***ers in their talons. That's as inconceivable as a European swallow lugging a coconut. Who are these owls? Do you have any idea where they're taking us? Nope, but I bet it'll be another unpronounceable village full of mystery and a curious mix of Australia, New Zealand, and British accents. God damn, this is a lot of flying. I'm starting to think they're showing this entire journey from wherever the f to who the f cares in real time. Gilfie, stay with me. Just because Soren met Gilfie for five seconds on the way over here, he's got an insta protection boner. Some people look at this moment and think, ooh, that's a pretty white birdie owl. And I'm over here wondering what f***ing owl takes out the paint kit and keeps the tips of these bones looking hella red. I am Naira, Abla General of St. Agilius. Seriously, why do fantasy stories feel the need to name every goddamn thing? I'm Naira, this is Phil Bithus, and that's Flab McDrash. And I'm sitting on the Blozak Rock beneath the banner of Sludeen. Today is Massel Day on the month of Arbadarb. My favorite f***ing drink is who the f*** cares? Owls don't have eyes like this. They also don't talk, paint, or create anything at a forge. So, movie turns into avian Spartacus. And if we eventually get a scene of all these orphan owls holes standing up and shouting, I'm Zorn! I'm Zorn! I'm officially out of here. Do exactly as he says, or you'll never see the light of dawn. Considering most owls are nocturnal and don't enjoy the light of dawn, I'm not sure how this is a threat at all. I think they're trying to moon blink us. Moon blink us? According to this movie, moon blinking occurs when an owl is tired and sleeps under the moon. So this phenomenon would not only be commonly known, but would also absolutely lead to fear of the moon itself. And sure, maybe the source material for this film explains things differently, but this movie asks us to swallow a moon-sized pill of plot convenience, and I'm hacking that shit back up like an owl pellet. <laughs> Wait, did that owl just growl? Also, for the most part, this movie showcases the fact that owls are dicks. I always knew they were aloof and loud and ate your Tootsie Roll Pops, but I didn't realize they were real bastards. Welcome to the Pelatorium! Oh man, I hated it when my spouse got me a Pelatorium for Christmas, especially when she made me film my progress every day. Ugh, other owls, Pelatorium. 
That's right. They made the business of searching through piles of Al Puke an integral plot point in this movie. And this movie can suck my pellets for making me watch it. So now we watch Soren take this mystery metal to the gizzard zapper, and just as quickly as you can wonder, what is that weapon thing and how does it work? The writer said, skip, and never explained a damn thing. Also, as I watch this, I'll take a metal fleck from a piece of vomit to a floating orb of similar metal flecks. The only thing I can think of is how aggressively boring this shit is. What was the impetus for even making this movie? Not every beloved children's book series needs to be adapted, you know. That is an overhead image of a tongue and a vulva, and you can't tell me otherwise. I'm not complaining, but this is a kid's movie. Once we have amassed enough flecks, we will set a trap. Then it is up to you. Expositing a plan to your co-conspirator who is already in on that plan. Slow motion birding. I'm gonna teach you to fly. Kids, if an old man takes you back to his house, tells you not to ask questions, then tells you this, kick him in the crotch as hard as you can and f***ing run. Hang on, are those oil lamps back there? How the f*** did Grimble light those? And when did he light them since they just walked into his habitat? And why does an owl need f***ing oil lamps? <laughs> Rock blocking. Hey, it's just like Quidditch. On the this game, the snitches actually get stitches. Well done. You've shown exceptional obedience and discipline. Wouldn't it have been easier to say you're the best asshole? But I still hold out the hope of freeing my family. Really? <laughs> Yo, the Owl Queen or whatever was right behind Grimble, completely in the line of sight for Gilfie and Soren, but they didn't think to give him a heads up. This is your chance to go home! I am home. What's up Clud's ass in this movie? Sure, he was a pissy teenager, but it's not like he was treated poorly at home. He's been kidnapped, and the Naira's been f***ing with him the whole time they've been here. How's he rejecting his actual home out of hand? Especially with a golden ticket out of here. And this is why you don't keep open flames littered about your apartment. Yep, nothing says old-fashioned family entertainment like a kindly old bird getting brutally murdered nearly 30 minutes into your movie. I know, I know, kids like me that grew up in the 80s watching all kinds of kids' movies where characters died. But I thought this generation was too soft for that sh How is this even a chase right now? You're barely old enough to glide, and the Queen and her minions are experts at flying. This is like Finn being able to hold up against Kylo Ren for a while at the end of The Force Awakens. God damn it, until this movie stops giving me rando slow-mo glamour shots of flying f***ing owls, I'm gonna assign it 25 extra sins. What are we gonna do now, Soren? Didn't Gilfie listen to Grimmelnuts when he told them to fly on to the Hoobastank to summon the Mothra of Guildenstern after crossing the Ballyhoo Forest or whatever? Honestly, I could be a little off on some of those pronunciations. Hey! Why are there so many goddamn owls around in this universe? Like, I've seen maybe three owls in my entire life. Is this Planet of the Owls? Twilight! We've got company! Ooh, I hope it's a creepy animatronic baby. That franchise has got to stay on brand. Dinner is served! And she will not stop talking. Which is your fault, really. Could have killed it before bringing it here and saved us all the trouble of hearing how this blind snake managed to find Soren despite being in a very isolated place. Mrs. P, it's me, Soren! Wait, 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 wait. How the hell did Mrs. P find them after they went all this way from the nest? Remember the whole journey out here? No? Well, let me jog your memory. With poetry! When Soren and Claude fell out of the tree, they were kidnapped by Jut and Jat, and then flew all night to the spurious plight and escaped when their guide went kersplat. When Gilfie and Soren took note of their soaring, they flew far away from the kill to the ocean they'll go with some new friends in tow, where I hope they'll be gruesomely murdered! Also, if a motherfucking snake can make it all the way out here to track Soren down, why couldn't his parents? They've got the power of flight, for Christ's sake! We are off to the Sea of Hooladans! But after you rest and sleep and eat, right? You're just skipping over that part of the story that was important a moment ago. Okay, onward. Hey, you know, Mrs. P, you might be the first snake ever to fly. You know, I think I am. Well, technically, this is your second flight. Your first one was when you were brought in to be devoured, but we aren't thinking about that anymore because everyone is friendly now. They've already kidnapped Clud's sister. How and when did they do that? And why were their parents missing again to allow that to happen? It's not like they need to hunt every night. There's no one in the f***ing nest anymore. The last of the Flex are on their way. And that's all we need to know about the Flex, I suppose. How does she know that all the Flex have been found in pellets? Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds of Gahool. Mrs. Mrs. P! This chase sequence of more flying, fighting, swooping, and swirling is genuinely what almost saves this movie. Several minutes have passed since the last time we saw a flight whoop hurling, and it was just awful. I find it hard to believe that this murder of crows would be content to just grab the one snake the owls are carrying, then would leave the parliament alone. Like, they would at least grab Gilfie, right? She's tiny and probably pretty tasty. Here we are. Man, it sure does seem like these assholes accidentally themselves into the correct position wherever they go, doesn't it? The sea of Holomir. Yes, the sea just beyond the arch of how the f*** was this arch made by owls? And it was foretold you would need some help getting here. Prophecies. I'm no aviation expert, but if there's inclement weather directly in their path, can't they fly above it? They were on top of the clouds just recently on the way over here, so you'd think they remember how to do it. Oh, Deus ex gardenia! 
sweet. They finally made it to Kahul. Now they can, um, <clears throat> they can rally the troops to, uh, <clears throat> what the f*** was their plan again? This movie is all journey and no destination. Jesus, look at that massive bonfire sitting at the base of this especially important looking tree. Why the f*** are these owls so obsessed with lighting pyres? Why do they put fires in trees? It could be a weapon. It could be a new shield Seriously, or armor. We now take you to the sudden council meeting already in progress. Seriously, this story pounds ahead so haphazardly that I feel like I've been narratively penetrated without lubricant. Oh, good glocks. Good glocks. I'll fight you right now. Order! Lauren, you can judge the winner. I hear this is exactly how sessions of the English Parliament are conducted. Soren, we did it. Sure, mission accomplished. Might as well kick back and have a few fosters and throw some shrimp on the barbie. Nothing left to do here, right? Eh? The Aussie version of premature celebration is even more annoying than the American ones. I'll tell you on the way to dinner. You're already late. They're late? Did they even know about dinner until now? And what the hell does their being late have to do with anything? Is the food gone? Is everyone gonna stare when they come in? Will they be voted off the island during the next tribal council? There's navigation, healing, search and rescue, blacksmithing, weather interpretation, colliering. I just spent a few minutes learning about collie whatevering. Apparently an owl dives into wildfires to harvest coals and embers for blacksmiths. But if these owls have fires everywhere, why would they ever risk their life to light up a coal? We're being shown Digger's gluttonous ways here, but who can blame him for pigging out when this bowl magically refills itself within seconds? You'll study tracking. Navigating. Who signed Soren and the gang up for this curriculum? Sure, he made it all the way out to the island, but did he ever say he definitely wanted to be a guardian? I'm not gonna play the song, but I assure you that the soundtrack features a musical act named Owl City because subtlety is for suckers and Joss Whedon movies. The f are they doing right now? Is this a sacred ritual or just a regular Thursday night routine? And aren't they trying to keep this owl version of Themyscira hidden? You can see them from miles away. <laughs> Do those masks immediately turn them into the evil dark troopers? Or the malfunctioning machines and iRobot? Wouldn't they be harder to fight if they don't have an easy identifier or which side they're on? It is time to set a fire that will consume the Owl Kingdom's pep rallies. Also, good for Metalbeard and his nefarious plans and all, but what about the other species of birds? What about the natural predators of owls? What about humans? My point is, once they've conquered the Owl Kingdom, what does this asshole want to do with that power? I'm going to teach you how to really fly. Damn it! Isn't Soren a little bit skeptical of these old dudes that keep telling him this? A scupper, a swillage, baggy wrinkle! Excitement? He sees it. I know Soren is courageous and kind and everything, but when did he become the one? He just learned how to fly a few days ago, man. Is he really supposed to bring balance back to the owl force now? Also, let me pause here to level some praise on this movie's amazing animation. While I'm tempted to remove a sin for how rad it is, it reminds me that it came at the expense of any semblance of story or stakes. So, unfortunately, you know how the counter crumples. My days as lies are well behind me. Older character that was formerly a badass announces he can't do it anymore, only to totally do badass shit later in the movie cliche. What the f is that? And don't tell me that this is an owl skeleton. This is an owl skeleton. That is a horror-filled monstrosity designed by an animator from the pits of hell. It looks like he's hurt. I think he ran into some of your pure ones. I am projecting, of course, considering he hasn't said shit since he got back, but it's fun to imagine what happened. He also probably stopped off at a Taco Bell on the way back. Oh no, looks like she saw the basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets. I hope the Guardians have some extra mandrakes lying around on the island. There they go, off to fight the evil forces that threaten their way of life, or wait, the pure ones aren't really messing with them, right? Okay, they're going to fight off the evil forces that want to, uh, what do they want again? Something, something claiming what was theirs? I gotta say, the motivations of the characters in this movie are murkier than the sky during the trip over here. It's f***ing daytime, assholes. What is this one candle supposed to be doing? Backstabbing. Oh, Eglantine. So, what brought her back? How'd she beat the moon blink? Any explanation? Hell, at least Ben kissed the deadlights out of Bev in It Chapter 1 when she looked like this. This is Gahoo! Gahoo! We should check out that smoke. I agree. You know that old children's tale from the sea? Where there's smoke, there's usually a flock of paralyzed owls wearing military-grade armor. They do something terrible to your gizzard! That's what the bartender said to me when I ordered those seven shots of gin, but did it stop me? What an awesome hero. How brave. Such gizzard. So slow-mo. Soren's talons aren't burned off here, despite holding a pot of oil that is currently on f***ing fire! I've never been an owl flying into battle before, so maybe I'm missing something here. But at what point does lugging an instrument just become cumbersome? What? Oh wow, it's the brother versus brother fight that no one could have seen coming at the beginning of this movie. Metal Beak watches his nemesis fly closer and closer, then slam him in the face. You know, rather than not just sit there and be slammed in the face. Once again, it's come down to just you and me. 
No, there's an entire battle going on out there, and you ass munchers should be part of it, rather than engaging in this solo pissing match. They believe in me like no one else ever has. Daddy issues. Hans Gruber and Die Hard, Judge Frollo and the Hunchback of Notre Dame, that weird dude with the fake arms at the end of Robocop, truly none of them could hold a candle to this heartbreaking but satisfying death scene. Pure ones, fall back! Yes, retreat and regroup so that you can come back even stronger for the sequel. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't finish that with a straight face. As it was in the old ages. Ah, sudden end of movie alleration. <laughs> Duh! <sighs> the stories. <laughs> They're real. Soren, your dad is literally standing in the magical owl land. He knows it's real. We're so proud of you. See, we do care. Not enough that we'd actually come to the fight and help rescue our only sons from killing each other, but from afar, we hear that you did some pretty nice work. Kudos, kiddo. Yo, if Chewie is given another bull medal in this celebration, I am f***ing losing it. You are grounded, mister! Hey, it's Sin Week! That means we are releasing two videos here on YouTube and three extras for our Sin Club members. Head to patreon.com slash cinemasins to watch this week's Extra Sins videos, and while you're there, click around to discover over 70 other exclusive videos and podcasts just for members. What? You want more? Fine, we also have merch discount codes and access to our Discord. More? God damn. Well, you can get two months free when you sign up for the annual plan, but that is it! Join the Sin Club now at patreon.com slash cinemasense. The Guardians were outnumbered. Things look dark. Then we will fight in the shade. Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Oh, you're a little bunny rabbit. You like your little bunny rabbit, don't you? Yes, yes. I'm cold. So very cold. Now state your desire. To seek the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? We're gonna be talking about the penis! <laughs> we'll be talking about the vagina! And we will definitely be spending a lot of time talking about masturbation! I will not hang up the phone until their client either buys or f***ing dies! Why, Johnny Ringo, you look like somebody just walked over your grave.